story had us fighting over who would get to do it. We're taking a guided tour of the brand new ship that takes our scientists to Antarctica and back. The SA Gullis II had a brief layover in Cape Town recently, and we got to take a look at some of the amazing technology they have on board. The hulk behind me is the S.A. Agullas II, the high-tech vessel tasked with not only ferrying our scientists to the remote research stations of the Southern Oceans, but also all the way to Antarctica. But the ship is more than a ferry for people and supplies. It's a fully-fledged scientific vessel in its own right. Let's take a look on board. The S.A. Agullas II took over from the original vessel, which had seen 34 years of action. Managed by the Department of Environmental Affairs, it's used for Antarctic research and supply vessel support, and also undertakes research in Antarctica and on Marion and Gough Islands. Built in Finland, Agullas II arrived in her home port in May 2013. The first voyage she undertook under full South African command was in August, a 26-day cruise to the edge of the ice shelf in Antarctica. All ships are built to a certain standard, and it's laid out by international authorities. And, but this ship, in fact, has five or six standards. It's a tanker, it's a cargo ship, it's a helicopter carrier, it's a research ship, it's an icebreaker. Each one of those has their own set of rules, and the challenge for us was to try and merge those rules to a, to a level of safety that, that satisfied the various statutory authorities. You can see there's an array of electronic track plotters and charts and uh, radars. We, got a, we have ice radar adaptions. Uh, we have a dynamic positioning system. Uh, we have a satellite communication system, and we have a, uh, a very large satellite dish which allows us to communicate anywhere, uh, either emails or data or news for that matter, just to keep the ship uh, in line with what's happening in the outside world, bearing in mind that you could be away for three months. She's around 20 meters longer than her predecessor and can still carry 100 passengers in 46 cabins. What's really changed from version one to version two though is the scientific capability. If one takes the last 50 years, and I can speak with that with some authority, the technological changes have been astronomical from literally handheld self-reading measurements to satellite transmission of data. And uh, so it's a whole new ball game. It's a whole new technology has grown in the last 10 years to transform oceanography, where you can do your oceanography almost from your laboratory rather than go to sea. You still need the guys to do this stuff, but uh, a vast amount of information now is done via satellite. Okay, this is the main sampling laboratory where we do all our vertical sampling. Above me there are all the winches that drive these various probes. And this one here is uh, sitting on top of what is known as a moon pool. And the two hatches below there open up. We raise the, the unit, open the hatch, and then that trunk goes right through the bottom of the ship. But at the bottom of the probe is a whole series of sensors that measure temperature, depth, uh, conductivity, light, oxygen, a whole range of, uh, of uh, chemical, physical, and biological parameters. And above are the actual sampling bottles. So the modus operandi is we lower this probe down to, let's say, 2,000 meters. The scientists can then see the profile, the temperature and the salinity profile, then they decide at what depth they want to take an actual water sample. The SA Agullas II packs a lot more punch than her predecessor, with the ability to break one meter thick ice at a speed of five knots. This ship is diesel electric. We have two engine rooms and two propulsion rooms. Each engine room has two generators. Um, this is a diesel engine part, produces 3,000 kilowatts, each of them. They drive a generator producing 3.3 kilovolts. And the power produced by the generator provides power to the propulsion motors, which turn the propeller. Considering the conditions we, we work in, the, the sub-zero temperatures, heating is a a very important part of our, of our, of our system here. Yeah? So we have thermal fluid oil that we heat up uh, using the waste heat of the engines. 
and we also have thermal fluid burners that keep the oil uh, warm. So we use that to provide heating towards our air conditioning and all the colder spaces on the vessel. We run this through with fans, thereby keeping the vessel warm. In a few days' time, this magnificent vessel braves the high seas once more as it heads for the frozen shores of Antarctica. The ship is close to the hearts of so many South African scientists, and even for a civilian like me. She's an imposing sight, almost makes me want to stow away and go exploring.